In the 2021.7 release of Home Assistant, the team shipped trigger IDs. At first glance, I couldn't figure out what problem these were trying to solve. Then I started to refactor my automations, and holy crap, these things are going to change your life. So stick around because automating the boring stuff just got easier. What's up everyone, my name is Jeff. And if this is your first time here, at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using smart home tech. One of the big reasons I use Home Assistant is the ability to write advanced automations. But writing those advanced automations has always been out of reach for most beginners, and even some of the casual home automators, because they always involve templates, Jinja, and YAML. But the recently added trigger IDs can help people of all skill levels write advanced automations. If you've seen some of my recent videos, you've probably already seen these trigger IDs in action, but I wanted to do a dedicated video. But before we get into all the details of trigger IDs, let's cover some basics. In complex automations, you may have more than one trigger. These triggers might be a group of entities that are all really similar, like a list of binary door sensors in an automation that triggers a door chime. If any of these doors open, this automation would fire and play a door chime. In that case, we probably don't care which door was open. But what happens if we want to announce what door is open? Prior to trigger ID, you would have to do something like this, where we look at the trigger entity and try to determine if the door that was opened was kitchen, so that we could announce that the kitchen door is the one that's open. But to do that, you would need to know that this trigger entity exists. And I don't think it's well documented. On top of that, you would have to know how to get to this and evaluate this condition using a template. With trigger IDs, we can just assign an ID that we want to each of these triggers in our automation. And then we can use the trigger ID later in our automation to determine which trigger was the one that kicked off this automation. So now that we have an idea of what we're getting with trigger IDs, let's go through some examples of how this could simplify our automations. Automations are usually tied to a change of state of some kind. Like, we may have an automation that when the sun goes down, we turn on our front porch lights. Then we have another automation that when the sun comes up in the morning, we turn off the front porch lights. With the choose action, we can combine these two automations into one, and trigger IDs make it even easier. My first Home Assistant video here on YouTube was about creating a haunted house that would play random haunted sounds at random intervals. If you want to know more about this haunted house effect, check out my video on creating a haunted house with Home Assistant. But go easy, it was my first YouTube video. The basic idea is, when the This Is Halloween switch is turned on, the haunted house effect would start. And if I turn off the switch, the effect would stop. Prior to Home Assistant version.113, this was the easiest way to automate this. One automation to handle when the switch was turned on, and one automation to handle when the switch was turned off. But using trigger IDs and the choose action, we can turn these into a single automation. So instead of this, we can have this. Now we have one automation with two triggers. The first one is when the switch is turned on and we give it an ID of start. The second one is when the switch turns off and we give it an ID of stop. Then we use the choose action so we can have the automation do different actions based on which trigger kicked off this automation. If trigger ID is start, we do this first option and kick off our haunted house. And if trigger ID is stop, then we stop the media player and the haunted house script. This automation though was pretty simple and you wouldn't really need trigger IDs in this use case. Since all of this is tied to either an on or off state of an input boolean, we could just use it instead of the trigger IDs to determine which actions to do. But what about an automation that deals with presence? Here is my family has arrived automation that I built using the UI. The purpose of this automation is to kick off actions when someone returns home. So this automation contains triggers for each of my main present sensors. Then the first action is to kick off the script that handles the generic family is home routine, which includes things like turning on the lights if it's dark outside and disarming the security system. But then its next step is to use the choose action and depending on what triggered this automation, perhaps take some different actions. For example, if the friendly name of whatever triggered this automation was Jeffrey, then we're going to do these things. Prior to trigger IDs though, you had to use a Jinja based template to test to see who triggered the automation because the trigger entity wasn't available via the UI. But with trigger IDs, we can now write this automation like this. 
For each of these triggers, we provide a trigger ID. Then on our choose action, we change the condition type to trigger, and in the trigger ID, we choose the ID we want to use for this option. The dropdown contains the values we used above. I think that use case is a little more in line with what trigger IDs were hoping to help with. But where I think they really come in handy is a use case like door notifications. In my setup, I have two automations for door notifications. The first one simply plays a chime when one of the doors is open. The second one triggers when any of those same doors are open for more than a minute, and then identifies the door, and then Jarvis says something snarky. Prior to trigger IDs, combining this into one single automation would have been quite a bit more complex. But now we can build it like this. We add both our door triggers. The first one, we give the ID chime, and it will be a comma delimited list of our door sensor entity IDs and watching for the state to go from off to on. Then we add our second trigger. This one will give the ID door still open with the same entity IDs and state change, but this time we'll add the for option and put a minute. Then in our action, we can use the choose action to allow the automation to take two different paths based on whether the door was just open or whether it's been standing open for more than a minute. We will just set the condition for the first option to trigger ID chime, then include our actions for playing our door chime. The second option condition will be trigger with the trigger ID door still open. Then include our actions for announcing our door. Unfortunately, in my setup, this part still relies on templates since I want to include the name of the door in my announcement. If you want to ignore all of this Jinja in YAML, you could create a trigger for each door and give it an ID to that specific door, like trigger ID front door, with the state we want to trigger on, like the door being open for more than one minute. Then in the choose action, you could use the condition trigger, the trigger ID front door, and then call your text-to-speech service or other notification and send a message specific to the front door. This would mean that you define more triggers in your automation, but it gets you out of having to touch the Jinja in YAML. The bottom line here is whether you're a beginner to Home Assistant or you've been writing automation since it was YAML or nothing, trigger IDs can help you reduce the number of automations you need and can make it easier to write complex automations. I hope to do a longer video in the near future on everything you need to know to write advanced automations in Home Assistant. But for now, I hope this gets you a little further into Home Assistant automations. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.